In this tutorial, we're going to look at how we can use the toolpath tiling option when working with a design that is larger than our machine's work area, or it may be that the material we have available is smaller than the design. So let's just go to File, Close. So let's go and open an existing file. So from the Toolpath Tile and Projects folder, we're going to open the large Howling Wolf 2.5D toolpaths. As you can see, the vectors there. You'll see at the bottom in the lower left hand corner in our drawing tab, we have our job dimensions. So we're working with a width of 72 inches, height of 48, and depth of 1.5 inches. Okay, so this 72 by 48 is actually bigger than most CNC machines' workable area. And there is a feature called the Toolpath Tile-In, which will enable us to cut a large project built up from smaller pieces. So let's just look at tiling our windows horizontally, and then we're going to go and switch over to the Toolpaths tab. So let's just preview all of the toolpaths to see what we're working with. I'm just going to use the Preview All Toolpaths option, so you'll see it's previewing those toolpaths there. And then if we just double click on this waste material that will delete it. So you can see we've got this howling wolf inside and it's made up of a series of pockets and then using a profile pass with a v-bit tool we've created this beveled text here and then we've got a profile pass just to actually cut the part out. So let's presume we had a CNC machine which has a machine bed area of 24 inches by 24 inches. So how do we machine something that is 72 inches by 48 inches, like we've got in this case here? So what we can do is if we just close this preview down, and we do have a tool that will enable us to cut this whole sign out, but in a series of tiles. So if we go to the toolpath operations section, you'll see this icon here is the tile toolpaths. And if I click on that, that will open up the toolpath tiling manager. And so I can move this window if I wanted to, and I can still interact with the software, so I can switch on the toolpaths, I can select vectors, so nothing will actually happen until we use this check option to tile our toolpaths. So let's use that option, so we're going to check that, and so the software can now divide up the toolpaths into tiles that are dependent on the tile size that you enter in the form here. Now at the moment the tile is the width and the length of our actual project, where it's picked that up from our job setup. And the Toolpath Tiling Manager gives us three different methods of creating our tiles for machining. So we have the option to create individual tiles, so if we had issues with the size for our machine area in both the X and the Y axis, we'd use this option. Then we have Feed Through in X and we also have Feed Through in Y. And these options would be used if we have some kind of restriction in either the X or the Y axis so that we can then feed through the material. So long thin products that we may want to make such as a mantle piece is a good example. Now for our desktop machine that we are using, it has a bed of 24 inches by 24 inches, so we need to look at using the individual tiles option. And so at the moment, our tile is currently set to the dimensions of our job. And so we've only really got one tile, and you'll see in the center here we have uh, some text that says T1, and that represents tile 1, and this is the overall part. Okay, now as we said, we need to change the dimensions for our tile so that it fits on our machine. So we're going to put that as 24 and then 24 here, and then if we use the option here to update those tiles, then you'll see that in the 2D view we now have six separate tiles, so you can see T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6. And then you'll also notice that uh, the active tile, which is highlighted red, the actual text there, so T1 is red 
active tile not only can I see that that's the active tile because of the shading of the tile and the text is red but I can see that all the toolpaths within that tile are visible here in the 3D view and I can also see that the active tile is currently tile T1 in this drop down bar and I could go through and change the tile so now the second tile or T2 is now selected so again it's red there we can see it there in the 3D view and we can see it over here in our tile-in manager. Okay, so again I could use the drop down menu to go to 3 to select them in the 2D view I could just simply double click in the tile and you'll see that it will just select um, those tiles for me make them the active tiles now the 3D view doesn't really show us a realistic view of how the part is going to be machined in a 24 by 24 inch tile. For example, we can see that the active tile is tile 1 and we can see in our preview here that my X0, Y0 origin is in the lower left hand corner. Now if we change the tiles, uh, you'll see that the origin remains the same over at X0, Y0 in the lower left hand corner. And this is because we have an option in the tiling manager to draw toolpaths in original position for visualisation. And so like it says, this is purely for visualisation purposes only to show you the toolpaths that you're creating for a particular tile as part of the overall whole job. So if we just go to view and use the option here to draw origin, so we can see that origin there. And if we use the option here to draw toolpaths in original position for visualisation, we'll just deselect that. And then we'll just go over to our toolpath preview and we're just going to reset that preview. You'll see now that we're presented with a 24 inch by 24 inch tile to visualise the toolpaths per tile so that we can get a good idea of how all of our individual tiles will look when we cut them out. Okay, and so you'll notice that our origin here is in the lower left. We're actually looking at tile 3 here. If I wanted to, I could preview all of the toolpaths for tile 3. So you can just see how that tile will look. Again, I could switch over to another tile. Again, you can still see that that origin is remaining in the lower left. And we can preview those toolpaths so you can see how that part looks. And again we could go over to another tile and then preview all the toolpaths and we can see how those tiles will look. So the software will pull out the toolpaths for the active tile that you have selected to simulate the preview for that tile. And so it's important to note that with the draw toolpaths in original position for visualisation switched on, it doesn't actually affect the X0, Y0 position of the tiles and the toolpaths that we actually save out. X0, Y0 will always be where we set it in the material setup and will be the same for each individual tile. Another option that we have in the toolpath tile and manager is the toolpath overlap. And this allows us to overlap toolpaths into the next tile by an amount that we specify. And the reason for applying an overlap would be that you may be using a special shape tool which use all or part of the diameter of the tool where you may need to overcut to get the required effect from the tool. For example, if you're using a V-bit you'll need to overrun the edges of your tile in order to complete the cuts using the side of the bit. So as an example, let's put in an overlap distance of a quarter of an inch and then we could use the option here to update those tiles and then if we just go into our preview and then just preview all of those tiles and then just switch on those toolpaths and if we just zoom in there we can see here we've got our lines where the toolpaths extend past the tile and this is our overlap. So now that we're happy with the tiles that we've previewed, we can begin to save them out. So let's close down the preview toolpaths form. I'm going to go over to save toolpaths. And so you'll see over here we have the option to output tiled toolpaths checked. And that's because we are tiling our toolpaths or working with the tile and manager. Okay, so other than this, it works exactly the same way that we save our ordinary toolpaths. 
So we could save them out individually by unchecking output all and we could just save them out um, as we choose or we could use the option to output all visible toolpaths to one file. You'll see that we do have this error message and that's because we are using multiple tools. So let's output the toolpaths that are using the same tool. So I'm just going to deselect this one, this one, this one, this one and this one. You'll see that we've got three toolpaths here that are all using the half inch end mill. So then you choose the appropriate post processor from the drop down list and then use the option to save the toolpath. So in here we could give this a name. I'm going to call this one pocket all so I know it's all the clearance toolpaths that we're looking at. And I could just simply press save. And if we go and save the toolpath again, just so we can look at those saved files, what the software's done, it's condensed pocket one, two, and three into one file, and then it's divided that toolpath up into six segments for each of the tiles that we have. And so for each toolpath we save out, we are actually going to get six of them. Okay, so let's just cancel that. And then you'd go ahead and save out all of the other toolpaths. So that completes this example on creating individual tiles using the Toolpath Tiling Manager. Now if you would like to find out how the feed through tiling options work, there is another tiling tutorial which uses a 3D toolpath example. And you can find this in the related videos section for this tutorial in the tutorial browser. Now one final thing to do would be to save the file so we've got access to it if we wanted to make further edits. So let's go to File, Save As and we're going to call this one Toolpath Tiling 2D Toolpaths. Press Save and you can access that from the project folder.